Hey guys, Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bootstrap Framework and using that to build a static website. In order to start this project, we're going to need a couple things. One of them being the, a WAMP server program. WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Although we're not going to be using all of those, we will need a backend server in order to work with some of the JavaScript libraries that we'll be using. So in order to get started, let's go ahead, open up our web browser and get ourselves a server. We're going to do the WAMP server. So let's just Google WAMP real quick. And go to the English site. Download your server. And you'll see that download will start shortly. All right. Next, once that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and install that. In my case, I'm going to be installing that to the D drive. All right, while that's installing, let's go ahead and get Bootstrap. You can see right here, when you come to their homepage at getbootstrap.com, you have an option to download Bootstrap. This will download the full version of it. Optionally, if you come over to Customize, you can actually turn on and off components. And we'll be taking a look at all the difference between all these different components and what they all can do. But for now, let's just download the full version of it. And we're not going to need the source or this or the SAS. WAMP is prompting us to point out our Explorer. And we'll just use the default settings local host. Go ahead and boot up WAMP. And you'll see in your toolbar, it'll go from red to green once it's working. So now we have the bootstrap distribution and WAMP running. Let's go to our bootstrap distro and you'll see that if you double click on that distro, I'm using 7-zip, this is actually a compressed file. We can just copy all of this information into a bootstrap folder in our WAMP directory. In my case that would be D drive WAMP www and then I'm just going to create a bootstrap folder which I've already done right here and I'll paste all of that content in there. All right, so now we've loaded up everything that we need for Bootstrap, which is the CSS files, the fonts, and the JavaScript library. All right, you'll notice with the fonts, these are actually glyph icons. Glyph icons actually refers to the, as opposed to a, a typical font, glyph icons are actually these guys right here. So if you think about it, fonts are typically done with vector graphics, whereas they're drawn mathematically. Uh, that allows them to be scaled infinitely. These are basically in comparison to wingdings that you would see in Microsoft, except a little bit more purposeful. All right, so next we have that component. Um, in order for Bootstrap to work, we're actually going to need to enable Java, uh, jQuery. Uh, it's a small little library that, that has a whole bunch of different stuff uh, that it can do. In order to enable jQuery, we're going to use the CDN network, which stands for Content Distribution Network, and that's available through Google. So I'm just going to go down and grab the most grab the most recent version of jQuery, and all I have to do is just copy this URL, and I'll just store that in the clipboard for now. All right. So if we go to our WAMP server we'll see is actually hosted at localhost you'll see that it's all up and running in our bootstrap folder we can go to that by just doing a forward slash bootstrap and it'll just give us an index of that directory because we have not created an index file for it so let's go ahead and create an index file for that and we'll do save as and we'll go to our bootstrap directory and we'll just do index.html 
and make sure to save type as either all types or HTML types, either or. We'll save that file if correctly. All right, now if we hit refresh on this, you'll see nothing appears. However, if we do test, hit save on that file, and refresh, you'll see the test appears in the very far upper left hand corner of the screen. All right, so the next thing we need to do is create a skeleton for our bootstrap to, to work in. So let's go ahead and do doc type. And this is going to tell the browser what type of document this is, HTML. And then we'll add a header. Inside the header, we'll put our jQuery library. Next, we will put a, let's do this, let's, let's pretend that we have our own custom CSS file in here. And that will be located inside the, actually let's do this first. Let's, let's create our own custom JavaScript file. Main.js, that's what we'll call it. That's in case later on we wanna add our own custom JavaScript. And we want it to be higher in the hierarchy. So we'll put that up top. Next, let's call the JavaScript equals JS forward slash bootstrap dot min. That stands for minified. It's just compressed version of the file. And script. And then let's call the style sheets. href is pointing to the style sheet. In this case, we're going to be pointing to the bootstrap style sheet. And we can point to the minified version on that, but I don't like to do that all the time because sometimes I look at the, like to look at the code in full on the style sheet. The next thing we're going to need is probably our own custom style sheet. Now we haven't created either of these files yet, but we're going to pretend like we have. And then we'll just call that custom. By putting it down here, it'll override the bootstrap styles in case that's something we want to do. We'll close that header. One little typo right there. Let's add a body tag. All right, so that put All right, and then close off the HTML. All right, so let's take a look at that file now. All right, nothing's changed, although what has happened, because we've called the CSS from up here, and we do have the body tag, you'll notice that that's slightly moved up into the upper left-hand corner, and that has to do with the uh, CSS in reference to the bootstrap file, clearing some of the margins on that. So let's take a look at one more thing before we end this. We're going to call our first class. And this basically is going to be the container that we put most of our code in in bootstrap. I'm going to close this div, put that in, and then pull that out one. All right, so that's just to make sure everything's nice and clean. All right, so now if I save that and hit test, 
All right, you'll see that that moved over to the defined margins. Now to explain bootstrap a little bit, this is currently, sorry, I have to open up my viewer to see that. All right, you'll see that right now we're looking at 940 by 980. It's actually a, that's actually a media query that's defining the location of this piece. It goes, I believe, up to 1170 where, where you find your first break on it. And then back down, you'll notice that it keeps resetting itself and kind of jumps around a bit. So you have breaks at 1170 pixels width, and then I believe 980 pixels, and then so on down. Uh, and so that's a grid and we can call all of those breaks and define them What do you what do I mean by defining them? We, we can say that uh, at a certain size, let's say 1170 um, This is this font is this size or uh, This is an entire row at 1170, but if we drop down to 980 pixels with that row becomes uh, two columns for example, so let's take a look at our first one which is going to be a row that we put here so we're basically putting this test in a row and we'll end that div and then we'll put one more div inside of there and this is going to be our first column And we'll say that at medium, it is six. And then we'll also say at small, it is 12. Okay, so we're based on a grid right here. It's a 12 point grid. What this means is that a medium screen size, this test, is going to be take up half the screen uh, based on the container size at small screen size it's going to take up the full entire row okay so if I put another div inside of here after closing this one off and assuming these are all in the same row so I'm going to put this exact same value in again right below there And hit save on that we'll just expand this and hit repeat well, that didn't work right I'm missing a div somewhere all right what is going on here let's see div open closed it's closing that all right this is one of the things you have to check for occasionally sometimes you'll mistype something you just got to go in and figure out what is not closing what. All right, so we have one. This one should be closing this one. This one should be closing this one. And then, but it, there's something open right here. So let's take a look and see what it is. Oh, I forgot class. I'm so silly. All right, let's hit refresh on that. <clears throat> now you can see those are in line and then separated. All right, so the next lesson, that's just the, the basics of Bootstrap. For the next lesson, we'll go into more detail and we'll take a look at how this column system works. But this essentially creates your basic setup for the entire file uh, and gets everything prepped for that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, next we'll be going into more detail and taking a look at the bootstrap libraries. Thanks again.